Welcome into Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. We're joined by Josh Blankenship. Coach, let's dive into a little bit about this Bentonville game. I know it, it didn't even... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you did. All right, three... Welcome to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm joined by head coach Josh Blankenship. Josh, let's kind of go back to this Bentonville game. I know it didn't end exactly the way that you wanted, but there was some positives there. What was the first takeaway that you had when when you looked over the game tape? Uh, that we played four quarters. Um, you know, we, we did a lot of good things. We had a lot of guys that were getting their first game experience, a lot of guys, um, you know, with a couple of preseason injuries that we had. Um, we had, you know, seven, we had three of our captains were out. Um, none of these are excuses. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. numbers here. Um, so with Donovan uh, on the defensive side of the ball, he was the only guy with uh, on the defense that was a returning starter, and then he's pretty beat up. Um, so we had we kind of had to try to hide him where he was at because he's protecting a couple shoulders. Um, and then on offense, you had uh, Cooper, uh, Caleb, and Ricky Fernandez up front. Uh, and then Cabry, you know, played a lot last year, never really carried the role as a starter. So kind of three and a half, four guys there. Um, so really, you're looking at about not even including special teams. You're looking at about 82% of your guys, 81% of your guys, um, that that was their first real experience um, against a really, really good team, you know, that brought everybody back from a state title game last year. Um, so we, we as coaches knew who we were going against and knew what a buzzsaw that was. But, you know, we try not to – talk too much about who they're going against, keep, try to keep the guys head down and focused on what, what they need to do. Um, you know, the end score was ugly. Um, you know, as a, as a coach that's ultimately responsible for all of it, I don't know if there's a, much of a difference in, in an L mm-hmm. on, the, on, the, on the record if it was like last year and it was 55 to 40 or whatever it was, or this year uh, getting smoked and not putting any points on the board. Um, the score looks vastly different, but the L's the L. Um, you know, what I was able to see this year w- was a lot of guys that are um, still encouraging me with what they're capable of doing. Um, we're blocking well, we're tackling well, uh, we're playing fast, and we're playing physical. We've got to play smarter football, and um, we've got to do a better job of, of doing our job um, every play. Um, it was a little bit of a game I call like a two out of three. You know, we'd have two positive things go where everybody, all 11 guys are doing their job. And then we'd have a third play uh, in a series or a drive where it seemed like one guy would kind of take their turn to, you know, brain fart, completely do something out of the ordinary, uh, which looks catastrophic, you right. know, when, when one guy makes a mistake. You know, you got one guy in the secondary with bad eyes and he looks at something he shouldn't be looking at. And then you've got the best receiver in Arkansas running down the, down the field unguarded, uncovered. Um, you know, you got a short yardage play and you snap the ball over the center's head or the quarterback's head, or you've got a short yardage play and you got a guy that goes the wrong way up front. Um, you know, those are things that are unacceptable, but at the same time, you know, the only way a guy's going to become more comfortable in doing his job is by keep playing football. Um, you, so we're close. You brought up the health factor, yep. you know, with Derek Osmond and Lane Condry not mm-hmm. in the lineup, but how much of their leadership helped those younger guys just being on the sideline? Because throughout the course of the game, I saw Derek chiming in to that mm-hmm. younger core. I mean, you got to like that side of things that he's not just feeling bad for himself, staying away. He's wanting to still be involved with this team as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the, again, it's the positive spin on a bad thing. You know, the, those guys lead best when they're out there doing it with those guys. Mm-hmm. And and I'm so appreciative that they're engaged and uh, can't wait for Condry to be back around when he can get around and crutch around on, on this broken leg. But those guys are invaluable, whether they're in the game or not. Um, I'm not discounting that, what they're doing. But ultimately, their their leadership is really echoed you know, throughout the team when they're out there leading the way and showing them how to do their job time and time again. We visited about Octavian Roberson the Mm. first time that we did Inside Tiger football. And I know I'm beaming about this young freshman, but you got to be just as excited what he was able to do out on uh, in the running back position for you guys. I'm super excited about Octavian. Uh, You know, I'm not downplaying it last week or this week. It's just, it's a journey. And uh, it's, it was his first game and, and, Everybody sees the running back position, mm-hmm. so you see the flashes of what he's capable of. Um, what a lot of people don't see is is we've got a 14-year-old starting at nose guard, Carter Archer. Um, those are the things that go a little unnoticed, but I'm seeing the flashes in those guys. We had two other sophomores starting at D-line. 
um, that I'm seeing the flashes and some of the best box play and D-line play that we've had here um, in a couple years since I've been here. So I'm seeing what the tra trajectory is um, in the film uh, throughout four quarters. You know, the, the young nose guard had a chance to tap out after rolling an ankle, and we had to go out and help him up. Um, he didn't. He went back in and finished. Um, you know, part of you wonders, you know, how's he going to, you know, a young guy going to respond? You know, the game's a lot faster than it was in eighth grade. Um, Octavian, you know, did more of what we expected him to do, and he's going to continue to grow and develop. Um, but it really is that storyline for so many of those kids out there. You know, it might even be a, a senior old lineman that this is the first time he's ever played um, meaningful minutes under the lights. And I'm just as excited about, you know, those kids and the, the trajectory I see them and the high ceiling of, of what we can get done this year um, that, that we got to keep our head down and keep working and block out all the noise because it's a long season and it's a journey. And one of the things we've taken a lot of pride in establishing as part of our culture is being red hot come the playoffs. And, uh, you know, it's harder to do that when you lose some leaders. Mm -hmm. It's harder to do that when, you know, the people outside of our building are, you know, um, you know, not pleased with the outcome of a game. So we're not pleased either. Um, but it's our job to stay focused and keep going to work to get better. And um, I think we've got a group that wants to do that and have bought into that. Young group out there right mm -hmm. now. And that's that's a head scratcher. It's tough coaching because, you know, they're still learning the fundamentals right. of what you're trying to preach to them. But you cannot discount the toughness that this team has, even yeah. how old they are out on the football field. We, we identified this probably, um, and this isn't stuff that you're just trying to blow false confidence sure. into the guys. Um, we identified as early as end of spring practice uh, in team camp um, some pretty key ingredients and characteristics of our team. And you're always trying to figure out what's the identity of your group, what do you need to build on, what do you need to do, what direction do you need to take them. And we couldn't shake the fact that we play fast, we're very physical, um, and we're very tough. And if you've got those ingredients um, as a coach – I'll take that any year and and go develop that. Um, if you've got that, you've got a shot. Um, you sprinkle in some some exceptional talent. Um, you sprinkle in some guys that learn their jobs and know how to do their jobs over and over and over again, and they stay committed to the process. And uh, I, it's one of those things you don't say it arrogantly, but you want to tell tell people just stay tuned and watch what we become this year. I love it. We're going to continue with head coach Josh Blankenship in Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. We're going to break down the offense and the defense against Ben. Stay with us. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone and Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union, life is better in balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. We're joined by Josh Blankenship. Coach, I know the defensive performance was not exactly what you wanted to see, but you got a lot of young players that are stepping up in roles that normally they would still be on the sidelines, mm -hmm. relishing that opportunity just to get on the field. So kind of just tell me what you've seen out of this young core, uh, multiple position groups getting their first opportunity playing some varsity football. Yeah, a lot of good things. Um, you know, we've got to do it more consistently or you're going to get exposed big time against good teams, and that's all we see is good teams. Uh, you know, even going into this next week, you know, a quarterback that might be one of the best that's come through Oklahoma high school football and he's surrounded with weapons and they're going to get theirs um, you just don't want to concede anything you want to make sure you're doing your job and make it as hard as possible um, we're we were doing a lot of good things um, regardless of who was out there young guys older guys um, up front I was really impressed with how uh, sustainable we played against the run um, guys consistently doing what they were supposed to do. I thought our box uh, adjustments and presence in there and how hard we played through four quarters was really encouraging. Um, we played hard on the back end. We just weren't very alignment sound, mm -hmm. assignment sound, bad eyes, looking at the wrong things. Um, I think getting caught up in the moment and letting the eye candy fool you and taking the bait and getting embarrassed for it. 
Um, you know, that stuff looks really ugly. Um, but the guys that we've got back there are guys that we, we fully trust to do the job. They've just got to do the job a little better, and we got to coach them better and make things uh, clearer for them so that they can do their jobs. So I see uh, – I really see us having a really good defense. Um, will that be this week? Will that be the next week? I don't know when that's going to start coming together, but we're a lot closer um, – I think that maybe we were even early last year just because of the the front playing a lot better than maybe we have recently. You were talking about the candy taking the bait. Only seven penalties against Benville. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you got to be positive about that, that the numbers were down. I believe it was around 45 yards as well. Yeah, I mean, penalties are kind of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. you, you've got your effort penalties, um, and then you've got your lack of focus penalties. You know, the lack of focus ones are the ones that chap your, your hide, and, uh, you know, that's stuff that we've got to – that indicates a level of focus um, or lack of, um, you know, that stuff that's obviously got to clean up. You you halfway anticipate a little bit of that in the first game and try to do things to, uh, you know, for example, maybe a little bit less motion on offense, you know, to try to eliminate the opportunity for a lineman getting twitchy or mm -hmm. um, sitting in there uncomfortably. But, uh, you know, that stuff's going to happen. It's got to get cleaned up. Um, effort penalties don't bother me as much, you know, uh, a guy that maybe hit a guy a hair late um, at the echo of the whistle and the ref saw it as late. Um, you know, those are things that you can coach a guy up to be a little smarter on. But when you got a guy giving you everything he's got, um, you, you handle that kind of penalty a little differently than a complete lack of focus. Bentville, they were the mm -hmm. state runner-up, mm -hmm. and they were a very quality team, but they didn't crack 100 yards on the on the ground attack. I mean, that, yeah. break it down for me about your front seven being able to contain all that. Well, it was part of what we – you know, my challenge to Coach Mon in the offseason was, um, you know, if we're really going to be this year and long-term going to be what we want to be, which is contending for a title every year, uh, those games are won in November and December. Um I, you know, I think every coach in Oklahoma will tell you that you've got to be able to run the ball and play defense, um, which means defensively, no matter what you're doing, you better find a way to stop the run because uh, when it gets cold, um, <laughs> it just the game evolves in the playoffs, and you've got to be able to run the ball. You've got to be able to stop the run. And uh, to see us start, as ugly as that score was, to see us start playing well uh, up front and in the box on the defensive side of the ball to limit that run game, which I believe they had uh, – I think they had nine of 11 starters back on offense um, and replaced them with a couple of really dynamic running backs, to be honest with you. Um, we were pretty concerned about the running back that started for him last year, and he gave us fits. Um, but the way we were able to bottle up the run and contain that, obviously we've got to stop the stuff that got the points on the board with the, the double moves and the play action and the gadget shots that went over the top of us. We obviously have to clean all that stuff up. Everybody in the stadium or everybody that watched the live stream knows we've got to fix that. Um, but if you're looking for what is encouraging, it's that what exactly what you pointed out is a um, bunch of young guys figuring it out way earlier than maybe we anticipated up front, um, and where we can limit a, uh, an offense like that in the rushing. Um, that's that's trending where we need it to trend. Figuring out that box formation, mm -hmm. knowing where to go. I mean, you're kind of like a robot, but you're not. I mean, that's something that just doesn't happen overnight. So right. I mean, break it down for for me with this core that they're understanding this. Well, it's it's. You know, there's so much done in the off season. Right. I mean, it's it's December all the way till August, and and then you start. You know, everybody else starts paying attention. Um, but there's been a lot of work. Not only these kids have put in, but these coaches have put in, of uh, you know, tweaking our scheme to fit our kids, tweaking our stuff um, to to let them be free to go play. Uh, maybe to free up, uh, you know, all the checks and adjustments and thinking that they got to do and make it more reactionary and ingrained in them. Um, and sometimes you got to simplify your scheme and your rules to allow the kids to do that, um, especially when you got a lot of kids that don't have uh, game time experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big challenge that I think our, our staff did a, did a great job of and our kids were committed to. You know, there's a lot of fundamental work that you can do within the rules of, you know, tackling technique uh, without tackling all the time, you know, in the off season, which you're not allowed to do, obviously. Right. Um, You'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to, yeah. Um, but getting some wrestling mats out and working on, uh, head placement, shoulder placement, uh, arm placement, you know, all those things. And, again, things I'm looking for and, and I see that are probably different than everybody else, but uh, we tackled really well. Um, you know, did we have some missed tackles? Yes, we did. But uh, you compare it to maybe the job that we had done as coaches going into last year, um, I thought we were a very poor tackling team last year. And it was, um, you know, it was a big emphasis in the offseason, and I'm seeing some fruits of it. 
Cooper Bates went over 100 yards, oh, yeah. completed about 50% of his passes. I know you want even more than 100 yards, yep. but just him back in the lineup for you, what does he bring to the offense? Number one is poise in his leadership. He's one of the few that's been out there, been there, done that in the biggest uh, biggest moments. Um, and he's he's excelled in the biggest moments. He's missed the mark in the biggest moments. And, and seasoned guys like that, um, there, there's no substitute for experience and and. Then you add in the leadership aspect that he brings. Um, he's really, really – he was already a, a great kid, great young man. Um, but to watch him transform into the guy, you know, and to own it and to take ownership of, of what we're going to do offensively. And, and he's not forcing the issue. He's trying to take what they're giving him because um, he's a dynamic player. And, you know, to, it's almost a challenge to get him to sit in that and rest mm -hmm. for that and take advantage of those moments when those moments – present themselves um, and try not to get to press and he didn't um, you know he had a ca couple of balls that got batted down mm -hmm. on some RPOs that I think uh, could have frustrated him but he stayed dialed in and uh, uh, did a lot of really really good things for us so many young receivers mm -hmm. a handful of upperclassmen I mean that can be a blessing in disguise because these younger guys that means are to me it seems like they're going to be even more hungry to get the ball and want that ball right. so break down the the relationship that he's going to have with this younger core out at the receiver. Position. Yeah. He's uh, Coop's obviously got a lot of chemistry with Caleb. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Caleb's everybody in the, everybody in the stadium knows we're trying to find ways to get him the ball. Um, so he, he's special in, in his relationship with Coop quarterback receiver is, is good. Um, Keaton Johnson is a junior receiver that has really, really, really committed uh, his time, his focus, his work ethic, everything. Uh, I mean, you talk about a kid growing up from sophomore to junior, um, that that guy has probably blown me away more than anybody as far as how how serious he's gotten about his craft, um, and it's showing up. He's making some some clutch catches. He's doing things away from the ball. Um, the the stuff we talked about, you know, starting in this conversation here about guys doing their job over and over and over again. Um, that's Keaton Johnson. Um, we've got some other guys that are rotating in and out. Um, a lot of young kids that are rotating in and out, trying to figure out who that next guy is that's going to take it if there is going to be one that just takes it and owns it because Caleb has obviously taken it Keaton has taken it um and we're we're kind of waiting to see you know a lot of talented kids but which one wants to go um be the most dependable guy to do their job playing and play out um there's a lot of guys that can do some dynamic things you know guys that can run guys that can catch guys that are blocking guys that uh, maybe maybe do their jobs really well but uh, maybe aren't dynamic so you've got a mixture of guys we're waiting to see who wants to rise up and take it right now until then it'll be a rotation of guys now your tight end group obviously mm -hmm. with Derek Osman out a lot of guys have to step up yep. what impressed you out of that crew because I mean they that are not they're not only trying to catch balls but they're blocking as well yeah a unique position kind of the hybrid you know mm -hmm. they, they've got one of our best coaches coaching them coach Gorman um, you know, a BA guy, uh, former old lineman. Uh, so he's got that, that, that knack of being able to help them understand the box and their, their responsibility as it's attached to the, to the old line group. Um, but then that, that knack of, uh, here's where you're also attached to the receiving group and, and your responsibilities in this department. Um, so coach Gorman does a great job with them. You know, uh, Osman and Condry were kind of slated as the, the two guys to be playing tight end. Um, with both of them out, now you're dependent on juniors and sophomores that are the next guys up. They did a really good job for the most part. Same conversation, two out of three is not the goal. Three out of three is the goal. And, uh, you know, if we can get closer to that, uh, those guys are going to do a really good job. They're really co uh, well coached. Uh, they're <laughs> kind of like I talked about the identity of our team. They play fast, they play physical, and they're tough. Um, you know, being locked in to do their job, um, every single play is, is going to be the critical thing that's going to help them grow. Because you're a former quarterback, mm -hmm. how often do you get to sling it out there at practice with these guys? I, I honestly do everything I can not to. <laughs> you know, it's like... No, you don't have the arm no more? No, I don't. And <laughs> But it's it's one of those things, too. Like, you, you, take a, you take a few years off of throwing the ball, and if I threw one right now, I would probably pull m muscles and things in my body that I didn't know were muscles and... <laughs> Things that probably aren't muscles but are really important to me, uh, you know, all those things are going to hurt if I try to step back and wing one. I'm not doing it. Well, maybe before the year ends, I'll run a, a go route and you can toss me one. I'll probably pull the ref underhand, <laughs> you know, just do something nice and friendly. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. 
FTTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard, even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. We've been visiting with Josh Blankenship, head coach. Now we're going to be joined by senior linebacker Jamie or Jaime Murillo. First Jamie off, man, Murillo. you get both names, so that double the power, I guess, on the defensive side of the football. What, what do you like to be called for the most of the time? Jamie Murillo. Jamie Murillo. I like being called Jamie Murillo. Jaime. <laughs> It'd be bad sometimes, but I like Jay Marilla more. <laughs> It'd be bad sometimes. For you, man, uh, you know, what's it like just playing defense? Because I know when you were in your younger part of your career, you played running back, but then they switched you to linebacker. So, I mean, what what changed and what what's so special about you playing defense for the Tigers? At running back, I didn't really feel like I was that fast. Like, comparing myself to, like, everybody else, I was like, dang, they're, they're really fast. I don't think I can shift it like them. And then one day I played a half game. It was a half game, and I had went in for linebacker for like scout team. It was like a fourth quarter, thing, fifth quarter, and then I had ended up doing really good, pretty good. And they moved me to linebacker, and then since then I just like linebacker a lot. I liked hitting people. I like being the one to hit people. I didn't I, like getting hit. I knew that was going to be one of the questions I was yeah. going to ask. Is every defensive player loves to hit people? So how much have you grown since that time of being a running back? Now switching to linebacker. I feel like I hit so much harder, so <laughs> way harder. I, this is, this is like a big difference. It's like a noticeable difference. Josh, for you, when you look at him just in his growth, mm-hmm. how special is he out on the defense for you guys? He's he's the he's one of our captains, but he really is the the point person of our defense, and and I really do believe we're going to go as he goes. He's growing into that leadership role. Um, you know, he's a full time starter now, where that's a you know he's played significant minutes, but this is his first time if, of feeling that ownership of this. We've talked about it. I mean, this is your defense as much as you're going to make it yours. Um, he was really the bright spot and not a really pretty night defensively on um, Friday. Um, I mean, till the till the clock went off, he was flying around, lighting people up and doing his job, playing and play out. And uh, uh, we knew he was going to be this kind of player. Um, he's matured tremendously over the course of the three years that I've known him. I mean, to the point of being – um, selected as a captain, not only by his, his peers, but, you know, it was a coach choice as well. And and uh, we got big expectations for him, but he's ready for it. For you, being that senior leader, a linebacker, I mean, a lot of linebackers are captains, and you're one of them. I mean, how much ownership do you take to that role, being the captain out on defense? I take a lot of ownership of that because it's like a really big spot in the defense. It's a really big spot on the team, like for the team. Like It's like I have a lot of young dogs in front of me too, so I got to get them straight, make sure they're straight. You know, make sure the whole defense is straight, and then it's like it's like a really like what's it called um, responsibility. Responsibility, like a really good responsibility. Like I love it. For you, you know, outside of football, what are you involved in? I see the Bass Pro shirt on, but do you fish? Do you hunt? I mean, what else do you do outside of football? Uh, I really I work, hang out with friends. If I have time to work, I hang out with friends. But um, really, I just work and did do some extra football stuff, but. Hobbies, I don't know. I just work and hang out with friends. <laughs> <laughs> work and hang out with friends. What do you want to see this final year for you individually as a player? And, and coach, kind of same thing with that. After he answers it, like, what do you want to see out of him? What, but first, let's start with you, Jamie. I want to have top of the line stats. I have top of the line stats. I want our defense to be at least top fifteen, top ten. I want all. I have high expectations for our team, and I, I hope we make it really far. And I. I personally, I hope I really make it far too. You know, I I think he's on it. Um, the ownership piece. You know, mm-hmm. we we we've got a uh, like he said, a lot of young guys that I'm putting kind of the the burden of getting them right um, on him. Um, a lot of young guys he's surrounded by, um, but I think uh, there's there's a very 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 high ceiling with the talent, even with those young guys. So they do, and that's what I love about him leading that group is is he sees the vision that we see and uh, how good that defense can be. Um, where, honestly, there, there are some years where you're kind of capped mm-hmm. at, the, at the talent level. Um, 
now they're young and they're going to make some young dumb mistakes until we we get all on the same page and get some traction and get some more more game time under our belts but that's what I'm excited about him I know he's going to go out and produce week in and week out um, but bringing that whole group with him um, and, and cementing his leadership in that group is what I'm excited to watch Jamie Union you face these guys probably ever since you were in Pee Wee's. I yeah. mean, what does this game mean? And it's on the road, obviously. So you got to go to the Red Hawks facility. But, it, you know, final time of the regular season, at least, that you're going to be facing this union team. I mean, how special is this matchup? It's pretty special. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Just, a, just another game. We have to do our best. You know, give it all. Give it, up, give it up with everything we got. Well, Jamie, I appreciate you stopping by. Josh, Jamie, Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. We face union on Friday night at 7 p.m. Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. T2CU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Head coach Josh Blankenship with me. Coach, when you look at Union, they present a lot of obstacles, not just on offense, defense, but their quarterback, one of the best in the country, uh, not only in the state of Oklahoma, but throughout the country as well. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably talented. Um, you know, it's it's hard not to get into fan mode and want to watch something that's pretty special happening uh, with that kid. He's He's got unbelievable tools, and he's really honed his skills. Uh, I think the mental side that he's really dialed in on is, is really impressive. He knows where to go with the ball. Uh, he knows where to attack coverages, and, and he's got a good feel for protections and when he's got to get the ball out of his hands. So even getting to him is really hard. And then he's surrounded by weapons. You know, he's – it's kind of the uh, that that mantra of of playing a Kobe Bryant, a Michael Jordan. It's like you know they're going to get theirs, um, but you want to try to contain it as much as possible, and and certainly not uh, have self imposed uh, you know issues or mistakes. You know, make them earn it. At this level, I mean, he's been playing since he was a freshman, and now mm -hmm. he's a junior. I mean, he's kind of the grizzled veteran out <laughs> there, and it seems like yesterday he was just a freshman. I mean. How talented is he at the quarterback position? Uh, he's he's special, and I you know I don't know him uh, other than just playing against him or watching him. Um, but uh, everything you hear from his coaches is uh, he's one of the strongest kids in the weight room. He's one of the hardest workers. Uh, every appearance is that he's a, a great leader. Um, I I see the cerebral aspect, and he's got an unbelievable aspect of the game, and then obviously his talent level. You know what he's able to do throwing the ball wise, his release. And then he's put on some good weight, and he runs a lot better than I think he's gotten credit for um, as a younger uh, QB. And that's certainly a thing you got to account for now is he's big, physical, and can move too. This union team has a lot of upperclassmen, mm -hmm. receivers. Geno Boyd, you've been having mm -hmm. to go against him for quite some time. What do the receivers bring to the challenge? Uh, any, you know, it's not a deal where they're just trying to hone in on getting one guy the ball. It's, it's they've got so many weapons uh, that they, I bet the challenge is trying to spread it around, keep everybody happy. Uh, Gino Boyd obviously is kind of the bell cow of that group for me. Um, you know, he was uh, ironically last year when we played him in the quarterfinals, he was, um, you know, they had had some injuries, some other guys that uh, maybe weren't going to go, and uh, he didn't have kind of the notoriety. Now, we were familiar with him because we mm -hmm. see him all the time, um, and, and it turned into one of those games that he was kind of the next option after, you know, I think maybe they had a running back went down, uh, had another receiver maybe that was down. Um, but you kind of knew he was like the next guy that they were probably going to focus in on, and they certainly did, and, and he had a, an unbelievable game. And, I, you know, he's not to downplay anything he had done to that point, but I really thought that was kind of his coming, in, coming out uh, game where uh, you knew that going into this year he was going to be the point man. In the backfield, running game, a mm -hmm. lot of upperclassmen as well. What challenges do they bring to the table? You know, talent, talent, talent. I mean, it's it's they're every position they're talented, and then uh, I know they've had a lot of kids that are are new over there, but that have just added to the depth of the talent, uh, specifically at running back. Um, we're we're not as caught up on on who, um, you know, what what jersey number. It's it's about doing our jobs, and I know that's kind of coach speak and cliche, but it really is what we've got to keep our head down and focused on. Is is our jobs going to be the same whether it's this guy running back, this guy running back, this guy running back. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, our ends, our nose, our backers, our edge guys, um, they've got their responsibilities of getting the call, executing the call, regardless of what running back is in there. Is this a chess match kind of uh, thought process that you go into this? Because you've known C uh, Coach Fred for yeah. a long time. If there's a little bit of that. I mean, I, especially this early with our crew. Um, the emphasis, and it was the first thing I told our staff on Friday night right after the game, was 
Um, don't get too caught up as a coach in in trying to scheme up uh, Union this weekend, you know, this previous weekend going into the, the practice week. Um, we have got to do everything we can to do what our kids know, uh, to put our kids in a position to be successful and have success. Now, the chess match, I think, is really a little bit with yourself. Um, it's it's we know what what is effective or what should be effective, you know, scheme wise against those guys. We know what can cause issues or give them issues or maybe get them to hesitate on some things, make them a little less confident in what they're doing. Um, and so there's a blend of and a balance of of finding some some ways to cause in some some issues. But ultimately, it's going to come down to the best chance we have is, is our kids doing what we do best and executing at a high level. And uh, so ultimately, that is the chess match is with ourselves, is uh, not getting too cute, not thinking ourselves of this, the, all these amazing things that we could do that would hurt these people or this, this scheme um, and, and stay dialed in on what do our kids need, not only for the long term and their mm-hmm. growth and getting better and what we've got to build on, um, but, but what do we got to do? to give our kids the best chance to go out there and beat Union. Um, that will always be the case, um, but it, but it's even more so the emphasis this early when you play a rival and you got a little bit of extra something of, like, you really want to get those guys. Um, um, and remembering that we've got to give our kids the best chance to go out and win the game and go have success. And it's not about our magical scheme we come up with. It's about execution. Um, so giving them that opportunity has been the focal point. And I think a lot of that goes back to the fact that we're, you know, we're less than 10 miles from one another. Mm-hmm. You guys have seen these guys since they were peewees mm-hmm. and so forth. So that adds to the excitement as well. They all know each other. I mean, they, they either hang out and things are so different than when you and sure. I were younger. I mean, they all hang out together. Um, you know, they, they all play seven on seven together, you know, in the off season. Uh, they go to church together. They, they date people at the other schools. Um, that would never happen. <laughs> oh, I married a girl from Jinx, but uh, you know that was taboo back then. Um, you know, it's uh, and then you add social media, where it, like you know, for all the negatives that social media can right. be, it does connect everybody. Um, and so the, these guys all know each other and have grown up around each other, and and they're very familiar with one another. And they're you know six or seven miles down the down the road. That's what makes this football game even yep. more special. Union Broken Arrow seven oh five this Friday night. Thank you, Josh, for stopping by for Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Ripley. Thank you.